Hey everyone, welcome back to the Class 1A Podcast. My name is Andrew Nimsgren, and alongside me, I have James Graham to dive into episode 22 of My Hero Academia, season six, titled Friend, which I'm going to lead off right away at the beginning and to say it's probably one of my favorite episodes of the season, possibly the favorite, but that's only because of the last 10 minutes. And as we like to talk about it, every time Bakugo is on screen and we simp, and it was a great episode for him. So I think that has a lot to do with it. James, what are your initial reactions? Do you feel in the same way or not quite the same? It's I'd say it's definitely an up there episode for me. I don't know if it's the best one of the season yet, but I mean, it, it's just it, man. Like once Bach goes on screen, he just he really he really captivates us. And uh, I think I think that's both a credit to his character, his design and his VA. His VA is so good. They are incredible. And I think that's really what makes them. Uh, uh, makes Bakugo's presence as as effective as it is. Yeah, so obviously we'll get to a lot of that. We'll talk plenty mm-hmm. about Bakugo, what's coming, and all that kind of coming up here first. But before I get into that, just as a reminder, if you guys do enjoy this or anything else that we do or just want more My Hero Academia content, make sure to check us out on twitter.com slash class1apod or youtube.com slash class1a. Stay day with everything that we're doing. But before we go to the ending part, which I know is what we really want to talk about, let's go back to the beginning of the episode. Mm, which yeah, really yeah. kind of set Doc, Deku down this dark path is when they went and checked out the mansion. We learned about that mansion last week from Lady Gant. We see that it's kind of a two month jump. They're kind of messing with the timeline a little bit in this episode because we see the mansion, but we also see him kind of dealing with second assassins and all that kind of stuff. So the timeline isn't super clear here, but at some point they do jump forward to the mansion and they set off a hologram that ends up eventually blowing up. But in that, it was pretty much all for one, saying that, hey, I knew you'd do this. I know Lady DeGant isn't that. This was all her own choice, but just to be safe, I set this up, and now it's your turn. Pretty much kind of giving that great parallel back to All Might saying that to Deku. And clearly this kind of put him in some kind of funk, as we saw the rest of the episode. <laughs> and it's it's great. It is really making... All for one has felt like a villain recently and now kind of having that monologue moment, like that step ahead moment at the beginning of the episode made me really like him even more too. You get a face on like OBS hasn't been recording the whole time. Oh, we're good. I just... Oh. I oh, thought, I was waiting on you to say something. I thought you no, paused. No, I thought, sorry, I thought no, you no, lost no, connection. I thought you were doing the recap. I thought you were doing the recap. So I was oh, just like, no, no, right. no, we haven't been doing the full <laughs> recap. Sorry. Okay, cool. So yeah, I know there was a nice long ass pause there. So that's perfect. Yep. We'll be super okay, easy cool. to cut. Okay. So yeah, that was, it, <laughs> it was <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So Sorry. yeah, we're falling, we're falling back with, uh, with, with all I for one. I just kind of gave my thing on all for one being a better villain monologue, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it counters okay, down cool. and then we'll have you jump in. Okay. Sounds good. So three, two, one. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the really good part about this season right now is that and really about the series overall is that he like he as a villain has really t- like, you know, he really was like this uh I don't know, this background presence that you always knew was there, but you're like, okay, well, you know, he's like you know, he's like the the Sith Lord that's in the back and he doesn't really actually have that much presence. But now where he's in the forefront, you do really feel the gravity of like how much of a villain he actually is. And I think that was like, we're starting to see like the beginning steps of that, especially with this scene, him really getting under Deku's skin and, you know, delivering that, like, like you said, that wicked parallel back from, I think it was all Might speed and Camino, like yeah. basically it was right following after his he previous defeat. All for yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think that, I think that really drives home how good of a, and you know, like, you know, that's deliberate, right? You know, that's deliberate probably from yeah. not just like the writing, but also the character, like just to really, really fuck with Deku because he knows how beaten and battered All Might is at this point, right? So, yeah. And it feels like an actual threat. Like, even though we haven't really seen any kind of interaction between them, obviously we saw Shigaraki fight Deku, mm-hmm. but like, it always feels like whenever All for want to say something, we cut to him. He'd make these grand gestures and statements and all that. Like, okay, like whatever. Like clearly you have some kind of plan, but like, no, this felt like an actual threat. Like clearly yeah. it kind of shook Deku. Luckily everyone got out there. I'm happy to kind of see Mount Lady, a lot of the lurkers coming back and kind of seeing a little bit of the extended crew. Um, we lose death but, arms though, man. Like I like death arms is actually like, he was always like one of my favorite, like supporting characters that was always there. Was, you know, this gritty hulking dude that was always just, you know, like down to scrap, right? Like to actually like for them to 
kind of continue to touch on the whole like okay this this is this has lasting effects this is like like yeah like i'm pretty sure uh best genius makes like a like a denim reference that like everybody's thread could like snap the next day sort of thing right um like yeah it's just like I, i'm glad they're keeping with that that not everybody is like this incredibly indomitable person who can deal with all of this right yeah and like even going back like we saw him six episodes ago like they they flash back in this episode they flash back to it yeah. During the war arc, we saw him too. So, like, I think with a lot of the times, everyone else we've seen retiring have kind of been these faceless names or crossed who we've seen once. But Death Arms was in the very first ever episode of the anime. Like, he's yeah. uh, maybe the first hero I think we're ever introduced to because right when that first villain, we see Death Arms come and catch a car, then Kamai, uh, Kamai yeah. Woods, and Mount Lady go and Mount Lady. Him. So Yeah, like, the lurkers are the. Yeah, the workers are the first, right? Like, yeah. So it's crazy that one of the first heroes we ever see is now gone, and kind of showing that, yep, yeah, it can't be everyone. Kind of setting up the idea that maybe anyone in that room could just step away at any point. I don't think they will mm. at this point, but setting that up, and even kind of in that conversation, I love that they straight up answered the question that I'm sure a lot of people are doing. Like, obviously, we are a little ahead of the story. We know kind of where things are going, so we don't always ask or answer some of the questions of like. Why doesn't All for One talk about everything? Why isn't everyone just telling Deku the secret and stuff kind of like that? I like that they had that conversation because it's kind of a double-edged sword for everyone involved. For mm-hmm. the heroes, it could get rally up support. It could isolate Deku even more. For All for One, they kind of see it the same way. Well, everyone could turn on Deku and all that, or they could isolate him, rally around him, do something kind of like that. So they answered yeah. the question that both sides don't really want it, and Deku being alone is safest for the heroes. He's obviously yep. he's the only one that can really fight back, and they're all and they know that he's being tracked, and it's best for the villains because obviously one on one is when Deku is going to be his weakest. So I think it's it's a really great kind of setting of the scenes that hasn't been addressed of why is Deku just fighting alone because it's mm-hmm. best for everyone involved, which makes sense to me, and it's a question that I'm sure a lot of people have been asking. Yeah, and I think we're really starting to see this with like how it's manifesting within Deku as well. Like you're starting to see that really exude from him. He's isolating himself. He's like he's like incredibly short with All Might, which I mean, if you think like think about the character that Deku is like throughout the series, right? Like I mean, any attention All Might typically gives him, he like eats it up. He like, you know, this is like yeah, because again, this is his hero, right? This is the guy he's he looked up to who he wanted to be, and he's basically quickly becoming. Um so now he's just basically like sh- incredibly short interactions and y- you're seeing like this amalgamation of um, sources really affecting his state. Right. So you have, you have all might, you have like the, the realities of the situation, which is okay. He needs to be by himself. And then you have the vestiges who have like their own emotion tied to this. And that all kind of manifests in him as well. Yeah. And there's one kind of tying thread to begin this whole episode, kind of going back to the All Might Deku relationship that Makuo mentioned early on too, but as Deku's running away, almost like, I know how it feels. Like, I know what you need to hear, but he's not able to say it in that moment. And yeah. then Makuo brings it back up later in this episode, is that you can't leave All Might and Deku alone because they both know what that burden are, but both of them are so into the mentality of just saving everyone that neither one of them can kind of speak up and say what really needs to be said. In this yeah. situation, specifically All Might. He knows what Deku needs to hear, but he can't say it because he agrees with how Deku's doing it at the same point because he agrees it's the best way to save everyone. So it is a very self-destructive pair. So it it is funny that, I mean, it, it would be the same thing that All Might would be doing if he had a mentor kind of the same thing yeah. there. It's literally the new person in just a different way. Which I think is really cool that you have, like... um you have your main, like your main, most powerful characters, like very flawed, right? Like that they have, like they are the way they are, but like that's not always the best thing, right? And that's why you really need the excited ex- stories, or as the episode is t- called, like you need your friends, right? You need you need people like really to like kind of like shake you out of that, like that really like the self destructive. Because right now it's just an echo chamber between the two of them, right? They're just perpetuating yeah. this because that's their tendency, right? So. And I'm glad they're getting back to that point. I think we're getting a little off topic here with the friends thing, but that's what My Hero Academia used to be. Mm. Like the first couple seasons was Deku dealing with his friends, his building his friends group, becoming friends with Todoroki and having that big moment there. A lot of yeah. it was having the people around you, supporting the people around you. And as we got farther in the show, obviously it becomes more focused on Deku. But I think I don't know if Horikoshi got this, that this was always a plan, but it kind of feels like towards the end episode that we'll get to is kind of a reset point. Like, nope. 
that's where the show's been going, but clearly that's not going to work. That's reset it, bring it back to the larger cast to having the people around Deku and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, we'll save a lot of that conversation for a couple minutes here. But big thing before we move on from All Might is we got a return appearance from someone that I was just going to say the extended cast, right? Yeah, like that speaking we, of, we thought was going to happen because obviously during the Tartars breakout, we saw a very favorite vigilante stain kind of come back into the scene not really knowing what to do it looked like he was a little bit more iffy we thought he might kind of be more morally gray and now we see him listening in to the conversation between all might and deku just sitting there so clearly not there fully with the intent to kill deku um but i don't know what's going to happen between him and all might obviously the ex person that he thought used to be the only real hero but he doesn't really have that in him anymore so it's going to be a very interesting interaction. It's yeah. Like I'm so curious to know like what Stain's perception is of this whole thing, given his like his pre- previous, like very concrete, like perception of, of, you know, hero society, all might, everything like that. Right. Like, I mean, because I think he kind of deemed Deku worthy towards the end of their fight. If I remember right. Deku. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right so i mean and now you like it's so it's so funny to me because stains in like plain clothes except his tongue is still out and his like, face is all fucked up still like it's just trying to look like a normal dude at this point but uh yeah no i'm really i'm really because we i think we kind of uh we were kind of curious if like stain would try and create his like his own faction in this kind of chaos sort of thing with like you know really wanting that just like only deemable characters like should like ascend into hero status sort of thing right so, but clearly he's taking a back seat and really, I think, I mean, I don't know, like if he's not trying to kill All Might right now, then what, what, what is he doing, right? Like what's he, what's his game plan, right? Or well, I'd even love to know that it has his opinion that Deku changed because that'd be a mm. big thing of that. Like early That's on, true. I was like, nope, Deku's a true hero. And now yeah. maybe after that interaction, he maybe doesn't even interact with All Might, but he goes after Deku and say, no, you're not who you used to be. And that might be a turning moment for him or something too. There's a lot of ways it can go because obviously both of the people that we have seen him deem as real are in totally different states than they were back then. All Might doesn't have his power anymore. And Deku is kind of going down this dark path. I mean, they literally make so many visual cues of him like going down a villain route. I don't think we ever see him as turning evil, but going down a dark route with the flashing of lightnings and the red eyes all the civilians being afraid of him. Like we see him going down this dark path, which doesn't seem something of what a true hero would be, but maybe Stain sees through all that. So a really interesting conversation with Stain, whether it's with Deku or All Might, there's going to be a cool moment before the end of the season um, that I am looking forward to. Yeah, we love Stain. Stain's Stain's a sick character. He, I'm, I'm happy he's back in like whatever capacity he's in. He's just, he's just a wicked character. I, yeah, I'd love for him to turn. I'd love for him to be yeah, like, imagine, right? dealing with that like in next season of like when they're fighting against All Might, like building that like trust with Stain, like how he works with them. Like there's there's so many cool ways you can go with a character like that because he doesn't Especially, hate. And because we like, know from Vigilantes, he started out as someone that just wanted to save people. He yeah, did it a little did. brutish, but he just wanted to save people as a vigilante. He wanted to become a hero and went down this route. So it, we know there's redeemable qualities in him more than most. Yeah, this is our shameless plug to go read Vigilantes. It is a concluded series at this point. So you can like just bender it and you don't have to wait like we did. Like just because, yeah, you get you get like Stain's origin story and like a slew of other characters you get to find out. You get more Mirko if you are, you know, in Dylan's kind of cast. So, I mean, like it's it's a win win across the board, right? Go read Vigilantes. Yeah, Um, but I think with that, let's kind of move into the final scene, the final moment. The Bakugo addressing it, the dictator fight, Deku clearly reaching his limits. Just kind of, I want to hear your thoughts kind of on this first. Of uh, what do you thought of this whole experience? What stuck out to you? Yeah, because I remember, I remember reading this, and I remember the the vestige state build up, and it was like because you didn't know what he was talking about, like what what Deku really needed and stuff like that, and it just all came to a head so so like perfectly well in this episode. I think they delivered it all very concisely. Um, because, like, you have a member in the best estate who looks incredibly like Bakugo. And he's like, all he needs is this. And then Bakugo shows up and just being himself, right? So, I in really, Bakugo kind of being, a, like, a bit of a detective. Being able to be like, okay, like, 
All Might had to do this because Deku's not near close to the school. All these heroes are not being like within contact of us. Obviously, something's up. Deku's a fucking liar. <laughs> like, let's go get him, sort of thing, right? Like, it is. Like, it's it's just again like a massive point of character growth for Bakugo to recognize that Deku needs support and to, like, and he does it in the most Bakugo way, where he just yeah. calls him on his shit. He's just like, "Are you able to smile right now?" I didn't fucking think so, right? Like, yeah. it's just. Oh my god, he's just such a good character. Like I think I think I think Horiko she puts all his creative energy into Bakugo as far as like what this character is capable of. And it really uh, feels like it. Like, oh, when he showed up on screen, just goosebumps. I'm getting a little bit of goosebumps now. Like just that first shot of like uh after he shoots the The um, AP shot. Also, yeah. yeah, the AP shot, and then he says, guys, he's here. Just that slow shot of him kind of falling saying that. Just gave me goosebumps because yeah. obviously this was nothing we've experienced before, but that doesn't mean seeing it animated isn't just great. Seeing the backstory, seeing how everyone was kind of dealing with their own emotions in their own way. Uraraka really having a couple of kind of moments here and feel like she's going to have a lot more to say coming up. So 100%. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. happy having the class back. It's been really cool. I've loved the war arc. I love all that, but I love getting back to Uraki even said, my hero academia. Like, <laughs> kind of getting back to, like, this is my academia. Getting back so, to the roots. <laughs> yeah. So I, but, uh, I did love that. Yeah, and, like, uh, just, like, to really drive home, like, how, how like, just to kind of, like, shill the uh, shill the manga a little bit. Like, that that chapter ended on Bakugo's face finding him. And, like, I know you and I were both so excited to see that moment animated, right? So it's it's great that way. But now it's, like, it, like, it looks like they're probably going to have to beat some sense into De- into Deku at this yeah. point because he's ready to square off with them, right? Like, and you fucking know Bakugo is so ready to, to just like beat him into submission. Like, he's, I think Uraka is ready to beat the shit out of him more than anyone at this point. She just looked, it literally looked like she's a different character too. So I really hope, because again, we don't, we know it's been at least two months, maybe longer. We don't know exactly how long Deku's been in the field. So, yeah, we like, they made it look like Class A, like, got the notes. And the very next day found this GPS. We know at least a couple months, I'm pretty sure, have passed. I'm not 100% mm. positive on that, but they never really make the timeline clear. But, like, yeah. it's not like he's been gone for three days. Like, there's some time for characters it's been some to really time, yeah. develop and grow and kind of go through some stuff. And I feel like Bakugo clearly did. Um, I think um, Ochako did. I feel like they're trying to bring Ida in because, like, he was, like, the third person they kind of showed. But yeah. I'm like, Ida's not going to say a damn thing. Like, Ida's character is done for the rest of the show, unfortunately. I, I just can't I, see him bringing him back in anymore. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really shit because, like, I think they could have done stuff, more stuff with Ida's character. Like, because with the Stain arc, it was like, okay, Ida is, like, he's the character who's on the edge, right? Like, he, he could be our character who turns sort of thing. But then after that, they just, like, drop him. Like they yeah. just totally drop him, and it's should it's have a been shame. Todoroki. Todoroki should have been the third one in that shot. Let's be honest, Ida's like that eighth wheel now. I think Shoji's closer than Ida is at this point. Like I'm not mad. Yeah, because actually, actually, like Deku and Shoji have had like several yeah. bro moments, Shoji, right? Uh, Tokiyami, like there's so many yeah. people. Sue, fuck, even Mineta. I feel like he's had more moments with an Ida in the last couple seasons. So yeah, but no, which is again, a tragedy because Ida's Ida's a good character. Ida is a fantastic character. We hyped him up a lot early on. Yeah. Um, but again, so I'm very excited to see how that kind of goes. Obviously, we know Deku's kind of at his limit already, not even really being able. He just got overpowered by the crowd. I mean, I, he was trying to not hurt people, but still, we kind of saw him reaching his limit. So hopefully no one gets injured. It'd be wild if Deku like severely injured someone and then Stain stepped in, had that kind of like awakening Ooh. in Deku or some kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. again, so many ways they can do it. I think they're doing everything right here. Um, and I think a lot of people complain the kind of this rogue arc was very short, but watching it animated, it felt great. We had a couple good moments. We've really felt the change in Deku. And now we're kind of seeing the class come back into it and how that's going to have an impact on it. So I think the pacing of all this has been really good. And I felt like another two or three episodes with Deku kind of in this moody might have gotten to be a little bit much. So I really feel like the timing and pacing of all this is fantastic. 
Yeah, I think I think this episode really seals the deal that it's got to come to an end, sort of thing. Because once you interject with basically like what, the, 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 this additional nineteen people looking for you and like ready to like basically bring you back by force, it's got to come to a conclusion. Because there's no way you like like avoid this avoid this for like you know like three more episodes. You know what I mean? Yes, a a very dark and like vigilante esque Deku would be sick, but with how they've kind of told the story yeah i think it's you can feel it coming to its conclusion already right yeah. um and the season's got to end somehow like well let's just say we're running out of episodes, three episodes too. left so yeah i think yeah. they have what three episodes left after this one 23 4 and 5 yeah. um so they have to wrap it up there has to be some kind of cliffhanger there has to be some kind of forward movement and yeah. it would feel like if they did three more episodes of this and then whatever this interaction is going to be of like bringing deku back to ua it could have mm. felt as good. We'll have to see how this kind of ends, but um, yeah, we'll have to see. I'm so just so happy with season six. It really was everything we were hoping it to be so far, and I hope these last three kind of episodes hit as hard as everything else. Yeah, you and me both, man, because they are yeah they're they're slapping. But with that, you got anything else to add, or you want to kind of wrap it up with Plus Ultra? Yeah, the the last point is what like what's the deal with our final user and why the fuck does he look so much like bakugo <laughs> like <laughs> i agree but like even if it is like bakugo's grandpa does that change much like i don't know it'd like, be kind of cool i think it'd be kind of cool i don't know but like, yeah. th- like you know it'd be cool but i think i think so when reading this it, like leaps and bounds of connections were made like because it's ridiculous but seeing the character design and actually the colors not like totally lining up i think that's a big thing being like okay like it, are they distant relatives maybe but in the manga like when the we arm first got are really weird though like in this episode yeah. you can very seriously clear some kind of arm gauntlets but like other people do use it i mean obviously um yeah i forget what the strong uh death arms he death has arms, like yeah. kind of gauntlets around them too like that's not it is, like it is an aesthetic like, thing, yeah, for go, sure. I'm not uh, Uraka has giant things around her wrist, so like, yeah, there are a lot of people doing that. I think that's another tie, and a lot of people do on top of the hair. Um, but I definitely seem they seem a lot more different here, colored than they did in the manga. I agree, with that. yeah. But holy shit, is it's still it's still fun to like, I love it, like theory craft about that, yeah, 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 honestly, yeah. yeah we, we still have no idea, so I'm excited to see if we go. That would be maybe a good cliffhanger done in the right way. I don't know. We, we got I, I'm really curious how they're gonna cliffhang this season. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. have to. But with that, let's move into the Plus Ultra Awards to wrap up this episode. Plus Ultra is an award we give away each and every week where a character goes beyond goes plus ultra. And James, who do you think fits that mold for this week? It's the greatest detective in Japan. It's it's Bakugo. It's <laughs> it's no like oh, straight up when he's on screen, he usually gets it because he does have such such good moments. And this is just it. He like like if you just like even if you just think of like how Bakugo and De- Deku started to getting to this point now, like still the same mood, still the same approach, gives way more fucks about this dude, right? So and I think I think that's it. I think you know he rallied the rest of Class One A to go go fetch and retrieve their boy sort of thing and he knows how to call him on his bullshit i think i think i think being a good friend is about as plus ultra as it gets yeah i mean i i agree i mean even taking out all of the character growth and everything i mean fuck i should almost give to the voice actor more than i should give to baka i I know right hearing it it it's just phenomenal the mocking of deku but still sounding like he cares like you could tell it's like a mocking of someone that's that cares which is a hard tone, especially when we're reading the text and listening to it in a language we don't understand fully. Like, but you can still feel it. getting that vibe. Yeah, is so so amazing. So I agree, it is Bakugo. So much growth, amazing voice acting through and through. A ten out of ten performance. Cannot wait to see where it goes next week because you know that energy. They probably did that in all one big shoot. That energy is probably going to be carried in directly in the next episode, and it's going to be another banger. For sure, absolutely. But. That is going to be it for this week's episode of the Cast 1A Podcast. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. We will be back next Saturday to go episode 23. I hope you guys all had a great time, and we will see you all then.